it was discovered that a sufficient electrical charge passed down a micro-thin ribbon of bismuth sped and aligned the rotation of the bismuth nuclei so that the axis were aligned perpendicular to the electrical flow. It was also discovered that microlayers of bismuth exhibit near superconductive properties at room temperature. This near superconductivity happens as the nuclei spin at very high speeds and act as miniature flywheels, guiding the electron flow and reducing electrical resistance. My latest findings seems to suggest that microfilaments and microlayers of bismuth exhibit true superconductivity at room temperature. The first atomic anti-gravitic device was constructed in 1999. My, that was a busy year. The device was simply a 10 cm wide ribbon of bismuth half a kilometer long and an average of 3 microns thick. It was coiled around a hollow copper core with a similar, 25 micron thick dielectric ribbon coiled around the core and between each bismuth layer. The free end of the bismuth ribbon was grounded. When a high voltage charge was applied to the copper core, the device punched through the ceiling and roof of the lab at a speed that was later estimated to be around Mach 8. The anti-gravity platforms that we see every day use three standard anti-gravity generators of this type mounted at angles around an axis with 120 degrees separating each. Other designs were explored. One of the most successful ideas was to apply the bismuth and dielectric layers directly to the exterior surface of a craft. This anti-gravitic skin slightly lowered manufacturing costs and allowed easier repairs. It also allowed us to explore our solar system with a greater safety factor and at higher speeds due to the protection from micrometeorites offered by the repulsion field that surrounded the craft. The first shape to get its anti-gravitic skin was the cigar shape. It was coated with the successive bismuth and dielectric layers. When a sufficient high voltage charge was passed across the bismuth microlayers from one end to the other, the repulsive field was generated tangential to the skin and perpendicular to the axis plane, giving a nice, stable lift. With the addition of two standard anti-grav generators, one at each end of the cigar, maneuverability was achieved. The traditional flying saucer shape was explored next. It was coated similarly and charged from top to bottom. Again, the repulsive field was generated tangential to the skin and perpendicular to the axis plane. Sitting on the ground, it repulsed laterally, providing zero lift. To direct the repulsion force from the lateral, the electrical flow needed to be made to travel around the axis instead of taking the shortest, fastest route between poles. The closer the spiraling of the electron flow, the closer the repulsive field aligns with the axis plane and therefore repulses more up and down. This spiraling was accomplished first with a spirally wound core and then more efficiently with a winding just deep of exterior surface. With this design, only one standard anti-grav generator mounted axially is needed to provide maneuverability. The addition of a ferrous layer near the winding, may or may not increase efficiency. I don't know. Using pulsed, high voltage DC, it's possible that in such an arrangement, nucleic rotation would be affected by both the electrical flow and the magnetic field. There are limitations to these craft arising from the fact that all the repulsive forces are directed tangential to the surface and never reach the interior of the craft. This limited the AC acceleration and deceleration to that which a human body could withstand. Then somebody had a brilliant idea. Why not put the occupants outside, on top of the craft? This way, the repulsion forces generated would, to a large degree, counterbalance the inertial forces on occupants as the craft accelerated. 
This is why we see domes on the top of early designs. Eventually, it was discovered that by using an exterior surface that had a sine wave ripple instead of a smooth surface, the repulsive effect could be directed into the interior.